So on the bench today is one of my microphones. This is my Samsung Go mic. This sits on my desk and it's been sitting on my desk for years. I use this for my live streams. When I'm live streaming, I have this microphone over by my computer. So when you see me right in front of the webcam, you know, face shot sort of thing, this is the microphone I'm using. And I noticed a few days ago that it's dead. It's actually stopped powering up. There was supposed to be little LED lights up here and it's not lighting up. So I think we might need to put it apart and have a look at it. So I'm using channel 2, set 5 volts. We'll be able to see the current draw here. So I'm going to plug it in now. So we are getting some current draw. It's doing something. 43 milliamps. Interesting. But there's definitely no light on the front. Making noise in the mic doesn't change anything. So it's a bit curious. I might just go and plug this back into my computer make sure there isn't actually any sound coming out of it. Maybe it's just the LED that's gone, but uh, hmm, it seems strange. So I plugged it in my computer, and yet definitely the mic is not showing up in the device list, so it's definitely not doing any data across the cable. Now, obviously I've tried another cable, I've tried two other cables, and it isn't a cable problem. And it won't be the socket, because this is always plugged in. Right? This isn't plugged in and out all the time and all that. It doesn't get wear and tear. It's just plugged in and left in. And this is the end that gets unplugged. Not the cable, and it's definitely not communicating with the computer. So I think the first task will be trying to get it off the stand, which I think is going to be these screws here. The one there. That's one over this side as well. And hopefully it will release it off the stand. I, don't, I actually have no idea. We just wing you here. No. I'm going to figure out how to get it off the stand. I'll let you know. So there's a hidden screw underneath this foot here. So that'll be it. There we go. Now it's moving. Right, it's off. And it's falling apart. That's fine. There we go. It's off the base. Brilliant. Oh, let's get this apart. I think it's probably going to be these screws on the sides here. Same depth. Okay, now what? Hmm. Oh, there we go. There is something, something happening. Uh, hmm. Something happening, but it's like it's stuck over here. Did these just push together? I wonder. There's these two sh clamshell things. What if they clipped together? Maybe I should try separating those. But it might be onto something. It does appear to be wanting to move. Right, it's starting to come open. Still not completely clear about how it comes apart yet. It's not obvious. There we go. Hold on, there we go. Right, and then we've got some wires up there and a capsule. There's a back panel. So there's the top of the PCB. Trying to get it as close as I can. So it's got some ceramic caps on there. That's always a suspicion. Also some tantalums, which also always a suspicion. But the current draw wasn't that high, so I'm not thinking it's really that big a deal. Solder joints on the actual socket look okay. An obvious cracks. I'll chuck on the microscope as well. On the back of the board, it's got this film on there. Let's peel this off. And that's what's on the back. Is that discoloured around here, or is it just me? Just there. Could this be flux residue from manual soldering? But again, not seeing anything obvious on here. So I'm just going to dismantle it, so I've just loosened the screw out. It's not completely out yet, but it's there, which is like this earth wire. And it's also got this plug which goes up to the actual microphone elements. So we'll pop this off, then we can only have to do with a bit less of the actual system. Get that out of the way. Right, so now we've got this piece to deal with, which would be a bit easier to deal with. Right, so I'm just going to record the screen of my microscope here as I'm looking at it. Yeah, that darkness I think is purely the manual soldering because this crystal is manually soldered and that looks pretty ugly as well. So you can see I mean by this area looking a bit ugly. I think it's purely the flux that's made it look like that. And no obvious problems with those solder joints there. Okay. So we've got one capacitor which I'm slightly suspicious of. Of course I can always just measure them, see if there's any signs of shorts on these caps. Because that's always a giveaway. Let's check the other side. 
these LEDs down here, which obviously aren't lighting up. Those caps look alright. Those look alright. Those joints. I look okay. So visually, there's nothing obvious. Okay, that's always fun. So that's capacity I'm suspicious about here. Let's check this one. Nothing, that's fine. I've already gone around and checked basically all the other ones, I think. That's just me touching the probes together. Yeah, there's nothing on this side of the board, which is bad. I haven't checked these ones. Let's check these ones. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, so... Nothing obvious on this side. <laughs> apart from cat here. It's always cat here. Let's check this side. Should probably use smaller probes for this, but anyway. These will do. It's fine. 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 Yeah. Um, fine. Fine. Some data. That's correct. Fine. Fine. Well, nothing obvious. Can I get down between these tantalums? Probably not with these probes. I did charge up, so it's doing something. So I can't find any shorts. Bit of a mystery then. So I was looking at solder joints now, similar same thing which looks bad there. The chip here, as you can see it's an ATM TC169 24C32N. They aren't looking wonderful. They could probably use a touch up. It's got another chip over here. 2115H06. That looks kind of okay though. And the chip on the back, which is this big device, whatever that is. What is this? CN65008 D9 something. Something like that. Anyway, you can probably read it. Maybe. Maybe you can read it. There's a glob of dirt on those two pins. Now, does that matter? I don't know. Maybe. What is that? Flux was due from when they've done this. It's from factory. Because I had this thing from new. So I might just clean up between those pins a bit more. Maybe that's something to do with it. Maybe it's become conductive. I mean, that can happen. Maybe I should clean up the switch. Make sure all these look alright. So there's a few little things I could potentially do. So I sweat around, drips of alcohol and everything. And I've got no signs of anything getting hot. There's no evaporation signs or anything like that. I'm not seeing anything which is showing a problem. Should we check this one? Yep, yeah, it's fine. We check these ones. Down there. Yep, yeah, that's alright. So I haven't found any capacitors or anything which is looking like it's getting warm. Nothing showing up as being a problem. I mean, it's obviously consuming 40 milliamps, so there's some power going somewhere, but aside from that, it's pretty dead. That black mark there is a bit of dirt, black pen mark down the side there, and they've got some on the side of the capacitor, it's not actually a burn mark, just a marker pen that's been left behind. Yeah, nothing obvious. Drip on these tantalums. Not getting warm. I'll do this one just to be sure. There we go. See it's dissolving. That's that pen mark disappearing. See that? So, yep, I can't find what's going on by heat, unfortunately. So I've got around checked all the inductors on this thing. There's one here, there's another lot there, for example. There's nothing wrong with those. Got two resistors just here, which are on data lines to that USB connector. They are 43 ohms. It's not those. So I've done checked every capacitor, every resistor, can't find anything wrong. Obviously the inductors as well, also okay. Resoldering it might be an option. But I mean, to be honest, the solder joints look basically okay. There's um, there's only a couple which aren't wonderful. So one other thing is, you've got this crystal here, Y1. 
not sure frequency that would be. It's probably a 32 kilohertz or something. So we could probe around, see if we've got a crystal frequency, in case the crystal's died, because that could certainly kill it. I don't think it's had any impacts or shocks or jolts or anything. I don't think it has. I don't believe it's been impacted by anything to break that crystal. Well, let's probe the crystal, see if we've got anything going on here. Try and get both things on screen at once. That's just high. Check the other side. That's just high as well. Hmm. Seems like there's no oscillation happening. Let's follow the lines down and come over to here. Carefully probe. Yep, nothing there. Interesting. No oscillation for the crystal. So usually crystals will have some associated circuitry with them to help them oscillate and stabilize them. Here's the crystal. There's a one meg resistor across the crystal itself. Quite a little bit of loading. You can see it comes off a trace just here to another capacitor. There's probably a 20 picofarad capacitor. And the other trace comes up, comes along this way, and there's another capacitor here, which would be another probably 20 picofarad capacitor. So you've got these two caps and that resistor, which are the circuitry which are usually used on crystals to help stabilize them, get them oscillating nicely, and that sort of stuff. So as to why this isn't working, don't know. I think it should be oscillating, so it could be a bad crystal. But then I'm looking at this, is that a little crack in the trace there? In that solder joint? Right there? I can see a little line in it. Is that a little crack? Can we get closer? Enhance. Oh, the always, the always enhance, isn't it? That's, it? that's enhance. Did you just see SI? Yes, I did. Yeah, I think that's cracked. See that little crack in there? Alright, let's resolder this crystal, see if it brings it back to life. Well, I've resoldered a solder leg. It's, well, resoldered the whole crystal, did both legs. Let's try this again. Current is slightly higher. There's still no LEDs though, so it probably isn't working still. Let's retest. That's just high. That's just high. So it wasn't that. That's a shame. That would have been easy. So taking a close look at the size of this crystal, it's a 12 megahertz crystal. I was thinking it's 32 kHz, but no, because it's a microcontroller. I was thinking, no, it's not. And yep, it's 12 megahertz. Now I've got a better idea what I should be looking for. Maybe recheck this and make sure that I'm actually not getting the frequency at all. It could just be the frequency is so high my scope's not seeing because I was expecting a live frequency. I should look for marking before, but I couldn't see one. So yeah, there it is. Get lighting on it right, you can see it. So I just tried injecting 12 megahertz at one volt peak to peak directly into the crystal connections from signal generator, which is behind the microscope here, which you can't currently see. And that didn't change anything. The LEDs didn't come on or anything like that. So it looks like it's maybe a processor problem because injecting a signal will usually bring something back to life if there's a crystal problem. Inject your own signal and you'll be good. For it's not function still with injection is um, surprising. If you inject a clock frequency into it from the crystal connections, usually um, you'll bring it back to life again. If the, even if the internal oscillator, because these have an internal oscillator in them, right? If that internal oscillator has failed, then it won't oscillate. That can happen. I've, I've done videos on that before. Injecting a signal will usually bypass the internal oscillator and make it work, and you know it will just it will just run. But this one isn't doing that, so it might be dead. Hmm, that's a shame. So I managed to find a dollar sheet for this chip, which is nice. It's a USB audio chip. So that's you know a quite a common part it'd seem. And pin 30 is the DC input to that chip, which I think is there anyway. And this is probe on here. So I get onto it, it's a bit tricky. And yep, we're getting 5 volts, 4.933 volts. So yep, power supply going in is there. It's got a whole bunch of GPIO and things like that. It's got all sorts of stuff on this, which most of this isn't used on this particular device. So it's just a USB audio chip. That's what it is. As I think this chip might be bad, I might be able to get another one. So it actually has an integrated 8051 microprocessor in it, and it uses external flash. Now, on the back, we had this chip here, which is a flash chip, right? It's a 24C32N, right? That's a flash IC. I've already resoldered the legs on that. Didn't help. Obviously, it's communicating with this, so either the flash has gone bad, 
which could explain why it doesn't work. Or, all the LC has gone bad, but the fact we've got no crystal oscillation going on here, I believe it's this IC here, so I think I need to replace this chip if I can get one. But now I know that it seems to be a common chip, I probably can get one. So we have a shot on it. So I've looked up that chip and I found data sheets for that chip, but I can't find a decent supplier for them. The um, only supplier I can find is eBay, which is like the last place you ever want to buy componentry. And you can only buy five at a time, and it's $50 US plus shipping. So it's like $80 straight away just for the parts for me. For $80 I can buy a whole new mic, exactly the same one. And that's not even including shipping, all right? So it's cheaper for me to buy another mic than it is to get the chips I need to try and fix that mic I've already got. It's a shame because I would like to fix it, I'd rather fix it than throw it away. Maybe one day I'll be able to find some chips somewhere or something, so I'll just put it to one side for now and maybe I'll do something with it later on. But for now, I think that's going to be a failed repair because it's just not cost effective to replace that part. I mean, I'm not even sure it is the chip. It probably is the chip, very likely to be the chip. I'm not certain, and the only way to be certain is to swap it out with a new one as eBay would be the source of the parts, if it still doesn't work I'd be questioning well is it the part I purchased of eBay which is the problem or is there still some other fault so it's just not worth it so I've gone online, bought myself another microphone not the same one, the Go mic was fine, I was happy with it I think it went about 5 or 6 years that mic you know that's how I've been using it, it's been a good mic up until the time it just died but no, I've purchased another one now videos down the bottom there, check those out subscribe link over there, Patreon support link over there if you want to help support the channel, help me to buy things like a new microphones so I can plug this wire into so I can still do live streams. Catch you later.